Hey everybody, this is super cool. The folks at Epic Games have released this sports broadcast motion design sample for Unreal Engine 5.6. This is a downloadable project from Fab, available for you to be able to explore from a professionally developed broadcast package. I mean, this is a truly professional broadcast graphics package put together entirely in Unreal Engine. And as per usual with Epic, they have made the entire project available for free download from the Fab Marketplace. Everything that you're seeing on screen playing out right now is available in its source files form from Fab. So uh, you know, maybe the background videos, I'll have to check. I haven't really dug around through it too much, but I did want to do a little bit of exploring so that you can find your way around and see some of the features that are inside and see how you can start exploring and learning for yourself. Uh, at this moment, I mean, it was just released not very long ago, and I haven't really seen a documentation page listed. Uh, interesting thing is there is a tips and tricks here on the, the fab page for it, and that links to a... Uh, a playlist of tips and tricks for motion design. Um, this is something I've actually been working on with the folks from Epic. So there's about six episodes of this out now. There's a few more in the pipe coming through. Uh, so that is cool, but it isn't really directly the materials that is in this level itself. And I am just now opening it up after having downloaded and taking a look. And so we're seeing this uh, right out of the box, really. And what we're able to look through here are levels that are set up as kind of full screen overlays. Uh, there are some complete full screen graphics, as well as some like background walls, some standings, uh, screens, and of course, our lower thirds and various score bar bugs. And so there's a lot of material here that you can learn from in the project. So how do we get into the project and take care of that? Uh, of course, you will uh, choose the add to my library button if you haven't gotten it yet. Uh, It'll have it add to library button and it is free. It's no cost to click that button and add it to your library. So after you've clicked the add to my library, you have these buttons for view and launcher and view in your library. If you click view and launcher, you'll be able to go to your library tab and search for sports and you'll see sports a broadcast motion design. Click on create project. That'll download all the files and create the project. It'll give you an opportunity to choose which directory on your storage uh, system that you want to put that on. And once you have that, you have access to this whole project. Uh, this is what I'm seeing right now. Now, the uh, first place to start, I would recommend is actually going into the rundowns folder, because this is where you can see the various playouts of the graphics. And so if I, for example, go to rundown full screens, I'm going to double click on this. This is the rundown where we've got all the different pages set up with the remote control values. So for example, let's say I say team assist lead Leaders, right? The data for this graphic is defined right here for this page. So this has some names and data and there's some, you know, uh, try quad codes for the different teams and things like that. And so with this selected here in the rundown from double clicking this, I can hit preview in and see how that looks when it's played out. We get the sound effects, we get all of the setups, and you can see that these player graphics are defined in a bit by what's happening here. So uh, these numbers, for example, uh, 12, 11, 10, 8, we see that 12, 11, 10, 8, and the names and all of this. I would imagine that these codes, some of these codes in here are indicating which graphics to use and the colors. And so this is a great way to take a look at these. So this is run down full screens. So some of what we have here is, uh, all right, let's take a look at a full lineup. So I can hit preview in and we'll see that play out here. All right, so there's a preview of a lineup. Uh, let's see, I think there were some, let me extend this template. So the templates here are the actual level assets that are used to define these. So if I go to title card, for example, and preview that, I should get a full title. Here we go. Full screen title. Uh, let's try title card sponsor. See what that looks like. A little bit different. So this way, if there, there is a sponsorship involved, um, we could do a player v player. And so you can see the names here are the individual levels. So let's say FS player versus player. We had this whole play out for us when we hit preview in. So I can just set this aside here and I'm going to look for this FS player versus player level 
in the project. So if I go to content and scenes is normally where we keep our maps and levels, double click on that. And again, I'm looking for FS player versus player. So scrolling through here, let's see if it is here. I am not seeing it in this particular folder. So what I'll do is go to content and in my filters, I'll say that I only want to look at levels. And now this is going to show me all the levels that are available. And then I'll use the search content for the word player. And now I can see in all folders what levels have the word player in them. And sure enough, I should find here it is FS player versus player. So I can double click on that to open it. I'm not going to save changes to anything that I have opened already. And here is that level with this sequencer already open. So if I look here in the motion design tab, I do have an in and an out animation. So the in animation is what's going to bring it into the screen. So we're at frame zero and playing this out. There's the entire animation. And if I switch to the out animation, it's everything is in place. Let's make sure we're at the beginning. And it looks like it's only a couple frames. So this is designed to just disappear. Poof gone. And that is, you know, some of the things that are in the level. Now we could see some of the other information here in terms of the setup. Let's switch back to the in animation, going to the end of that. Now we can see everything. We could take a look at the anatomy of this level. So let's go ahead and select this rectangle here. And since I have this level open, I'm just going to go ahead and close my rundown. So preview out, get everything out of my preview and close that up. Um, so here it is brush L. So it's the brush left and I can see some of the settings in here. And what I'm interested in is like, how is, how's the color of this defined, right? So if I scroll through, it's set up with a material designer material. So let's click on edit with material designer. There is an emissive color and sure enough, this color is exposed to the remote control with this uh, edge color pixel coded texture. So this quad code y, uh, WYRM corresponds to the name of this texture and it is exposed in remote control. So that means the operator in rundown can change this code somewhere to select this texture. So if I go to the remote control, sure enough, here are all the properties that can be adjusted. The property I was just looking at is one of these. And then these are the values that the operator of the page is going to be able to edit. So if I look for this WYRM here in input, let's see if we can find that. D -d 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 -d. There it is. Let's team L, right? And if I select this control, we can see, oh, all right. A lot of behaviors are tied to this control. When this value is entered, what it's doing is using that value to help define what path to there is used for several of these properties. So the property of this L brush color is being selected. And here's a preview of where that is. Um, so you know, this is some of the logic that's being used to define how these graphics are working based on the, the remote control settings. And uh, also an interesting thing is like this, it looks like these chevrons are, you know, they're being animated outside of sequencer, right? So the sequencer is not running right now, but these are still being animated. So what's going on is we probably have a cloner system going on here. And here this blue line is an effector that is moving through the scene. It's moving without keyframes. It's probably being moved through uh, animator in the operator stack. So let's find that effector. Oh, I think I found it. It looks like it's this pull. So this right here is moving up and down. Oh, and the reason I'm not seeing any animators is I don't have animators selected. I've got modifiers. I just want to see this go by. All right, animators. There we go. So this effector, this Chevron, is set up to oscillate and it's moving up and down. And so this effector, whatever it does to this cloner, and sure enough, there is the cloner itself, and um, is it's affecting the clones in here. So this effector is moving up and down and it's affecting these clones just to give that little bit of motion. And that's going to happen independent of sequencer uh, because of the fact that this is in the operator stack 
animators. And so this is really the anatomy of these different levels. So if you explore, uh, again, I would suggest, you know, I'm going to reset my filters right now. And uh, in content, I'll get rid of the word player. Start out with rundowns. So at rundown, full screens, double clicking this. All of these uh, pages are going to be different full screen graphics, right? And so there's sounds, animations. I, if I expand this, I get the actual name of the level that defines this animation. So I can preview that out and FS player stats. Let's see if we can find that really quickly. Content. I'm starting in scenes. I'm not exactly sure where they all are, but there it is. FS player stats. Oh, and there's the player versus player. So it is indeed in scenes. Sorry about that team. Um, it is exactly where it belongs in terms of the naming and file conventions. Uh, so here's the player stats. If I double click on that, don't save anything that I did with this one. Here is that animation, and we could see exactly what's in the sequencer here. That includes the audio, the whooshes that happen when we animate these different actors. So hitting play, that looks like that is the out animation. So I can switch to the in animation. And the nice thing about this one is expanding here, we have four different sequences. There's an in to bring it in when there's a blank screen and this is the first one we're bringing in. There is then a change out where we're going to bring in another player stat. You know, here, here's several different player stats in a row, right? So if I take the first one, I preview it in, we'll see the in animation. Once that's finished, I can preview next. It's gonna take me to the next page, which is has a different setup in terms of the values and that's going to play instead of the in animation it's going to play change out for this one and then it'll play change stats in for the incoming page so preview next plays the out plays the in it applies all of that data so that's what's going on there and then you can dissect from there so moving that out of the way for example we have this actor right here there's a mask main box. Um, we could find the, the logo of this player, etc. This is going to be a texture that's assigned in a remote control property. So sure enough, here it is. MACH is the designation that lets us find this particular property and puts that in. So the remote control is what set up, sets up the operator controls and the sequencer sets up our animations and you get our sound playthroughs and all of that. So um, once you're in the rundown, you can find the level and start dissecting that in terms of animations and all of these graphics. Uh, hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.